Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for joining me for the Draw Along Show, everybody. Glad you are here watching at behance.net slash Adobe Live, where the fun never stops if you're into art. If you're not into art, I don't know. Maybe it's still fun? You tell me. But we're here for all ages, all skill levels, drawing. And there's just no way you can mess these up, gang. That's the best thing about this show. Zero pressure, zero judgment. We do simple draw-alongs where we do a step-by-step -step drawing at the beginning of the show and everybody can follow along and after about nine or ten minutes guess what you have a finished piece of art that you could show to somebody and brag that you did it you know get a lot of praise a few pats on the back uh what could be better than that maybe you sell your drawing maybe you get rich maybe this launches your whole art career uh if that does happen please be sure to send a check in the mail to me and uh, I expect it to be a big one. Thank you. So to do this show, you will have to have something to draw with. It could be a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon, or it could be one of those uh, tubes that you use to float around in the pool and just, you know, take it out of the pool house there. And you're gonna dip that in some mustard and ketchup and then draw all over the walls, okay? Whatever you feel like is best. I won't judge, because like I said up front, no judgment. So art, 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 art. Folks, this is what I do all day long. I love it. It's the best thing ever. I hope you're excited to do some drawing. Get your supplies ready so we can get to it. Hope you're all staying sane and healthy out there. Quick hello to some folks who are joining us here on Behance. I see Sam. I see Kevin. I see Afroha and Steven. What's up, folks? Hey, Lauren. Nice to see you as well. Ajia, nice to see you. Mercur Mercurial, excuse me, and RB and Steven. All these nice folks joining the Draw Along show. Thank you for being here. Um, hey, you know I'm a big fan of pirates, always talking about pirates. Got a question for you. What do pirates steal when they're on land? Art. <laughs> so bad. All right, to do these drawings, what do you have to do? If you've been here before, you know what they are. Straight line, zigzag, curve a linear line. That's a C curve, could be an S curve, could go this way, could go that way. All right, those are our curvilinear lines. If you can do those three simple things, and I know you can, you can follow along and draw with me today. So why don't we get started? Today's drawing is gonna start with a long, wide rectangle. Check it out. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go one and two. We're gonna stretch it out, see that? This one's a long, wide rectangle. So, do the lines have to be perfectly straight? Not at all. Don't you worry about that. Not one bit. The lines can be nice and wobbly, okay? As long as you make them look kind of like a rectangle and you get some proportions that are kind of similar to what I've drawn here, okay? Long and wide rectangle. Um, oh, cool. Andrea says she's following along with her iPad. I like that. Hope you're trying Fresco if you haven't tried it. It's a fun, free app that we make over here at the Adurbs. That's my pet name for Adobe. All right, now we're gonna do a very shallow C curve, okay? And this is going to be taller than our rectangle. Look at the height of the rectangle. Imagine that you're almost doubling it, okay? Check it out. Very shallow C curve down to about there, okay? So that's, yeah, almost double the height. You're gonna wanna come over to the other side and do it Again, only this time we are mirroring it. Let's get that down a little bit. Remember what I said yesterday about the difference between mirroring and echoing? So a mirror is you take whatever you draw and you flip it, okay? And then you draw it on the other side. That's mirroring. Now what we want to do is we want to connect this side to that side, okay? So I'm going to do that right on over to there. Again, I know I'm drawing very straight lines here. I'm cheating, I'm using Photoshop. You needn't worry about that one bit. You follow along. If you wanna bring a ruler to these shows, you may absolutely do so, but it's okay to draw a wobbly line. And here's a reminder for everybody about drawing straight lines. It's always easier to draw them vertically, okay, than it is to draw them horizontally. So what you can do, of course, is you can take your paper and you can then draw downwards, okay, if that helps, and I think it will, okay? All right, now, any guesses as to what we're drawing? Can anybody guess what this is? I know it's a little early, but it's always fun to throw out some guesses. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to start about, um, let's see, a 
little more than maybe a third of the way from the left uh, to the right, left to the right, right to the left of this line. Okay, you can start on this side or this side, doesn't matter. I'm gonna come in about a, about a third, pop up a little ways like here and just draw a line to the other side and leave the same amount of space here as I do here, okay? And we're gonna angle up slightly. See that? A bit of an angle there. And I'm gonna do a really shallow C curve here. If you want, you can make that even a straight line. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, okay? But that's what I'm gonna do right there. Uh, Biola's here. Hey, Biola, thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Um, okay. Yeah, good friends in the chat, people who see each other, who are regulars in, in the audience on this show, which I always appreciate. Look at the height of this, okay? I want you to just take this top part and I want you to move on over this way. And we're gonna draw a line in from the side, all right? Like this, roughly around that same height. Do the same on this side, zing, like that. And I'm going to do a curvilinear line. It's going to come up and over this way, just like that. See how that curves and then kind of straightens out as it gets to the end, so it kind of becomes parallel with that other line. We're gonna do the same thing over here, like that. Now you'll be getting him some ideas about what this might be, huh? From this corner, I want you to leave a little bit of space and we're gonna draw a diagonal line. Now imagine you're trying to hit this little corner right here where that changes direction, okay? So I'm kind of aiming that way, see? Same on this side. Okay, is it becoming clear what we are drawing today? Are the clouds parting? Is the clarity there? Okay, now from here, we're just gonna do a little shape right here. I'm gonna make mine straight, curve, curve. But you can make it a circle or a square or a triangle, it doesn't matter. It could be whatever you want, okay? Aha, now let's come on over to this side. And I want you to look at where this ends, okay? This shape right here. And I want you to go between where this ends and this begins. So somewhere in this vicinity here, between here and here, I'm gonna drop down below this line and I'm gonna come down like this, pop on over like that, and then up. Notice I didn't come all the way to the edge. I left a tiny bit of space there, okay? That's what I'd like you all to do. Same on this side up and over. Okay. Now, right here, a little bit, a bit above halfway between the bottom of this line to the top, okay? We're gonna come in a little ways and we're just gonna draw a line like that. And then we're gonna go up and up, and then we're gonna angle this way and angle that way. Ta-da! Now inside each of these little rectangles down here, I'm gonna do a series of lines. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Hmm, I think we all know what this is now. I think we can all tell what this is. Okay. Off to the side, check it out. Remember this line right here? We're gonna pop up a little bit. Boing, like that. Same on that side. And instead of doing the curve at the top, we're gonna to curve at the bottom. Curve, curve. Look at that. Hey gang, we're almost done. This is the easy part. Now right in here, I'm gonna do a circle and another circle next to it with some space between the two, okay? One circle, two circle. And here, I'm just gonna put a little curve, a little curve linear line, very shallow C curve, shallow, shallow. What I'm pretending is like this is a circle, a little bit of a circle that's getting hidden. Okay, so you can probably tell what's going on. That is the steering wheel for this car. See that? And here I'm gonna come up, same over here. And then we're gonna come in this away and that away. And here comes one of our famous zigzags. Okay. And then right here, I'm gonna keep it so simple. I'm just gonna go whoop. Loop. See that? Come up, out, up, out. Okay, leave some space here. Come up, come up. And I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna draw a line straight across. 
and give this person a little hat like that. A smile, a couple of eyes. There they are, driving their cool sports car. Okay. You want to get fancy? Let's get fancy. Look at that. We're going to do a little ziggy zag kind of line, kind of smooth. Do a straight one. Do another one over here. We're showing some reflections off the glass of the windshield. That's some fancy stuff right there. How about this fanciness? One, two, three, four. A little bit of smoke, some exhaust, right? Give ourselves a little ground plane, if you like. There you go. That is our drawing for the You Draw It portion of the show. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to move along now to the art vocab for the day. I mentioned yesterday we hadn't done that in a while, so let's check it out. Today we have perspective. Now, I've talked a little bit about perspective on the show before, so most of you know what it is, but let's just define it. The term perspective refers to the representation of objects in three-dimensional space, i.e. for representing the visible world, on the two-dimensional surface of a picture. So what are you doing? You're creating an illusion. That's what's so cool about perspective. I love magic. I've mentioned this many times on the show. I'm a huge fan of magic and illusion, and this art of using the rules of perspective in your art is really something, creating the illusion that there is depth and that I could reach into a two-dimensional plane and go deeper and say, oh, look, there's depth there. Okay, the illusion of depth. What a cool thing that is. Here is an example by the great Dutch uh, painter Vermeer. And in this painting, you will notice that we have a feeling like we're standing um, in the entryway to a room and further away from us in that room, we have a uh, person who is looking at a lovely musical instrument. I'm going to say that's some kind of harpsichord or I don't know what. And you have the instructor and the student there. Um, and looking at this picture, you have to ask, what kind of perspective are we looking at? This is one point perspective, one point perspective. And if I may for a moment, just knock this back. I want to show you what happens when we use these handy dandy vanishing lines. Okay, we're gonna go back this way. Oh, sorry, these, these lines that go to our vanishing point. I'm just tracing that diagonal there. Okay, zing. And let's trace this one. Oh, look at that. Where do they meet? That is our point, all right, at which we'll find our horizon line. Okay, it should be about there actually. Um, and I can then trace up this way and look how that hits those windows. See that? Okay, what about over here? Zong! Everything works. There's our one point perspective in action. Very exciting. What a great trick. Um, now, here was the complicated thing. Imagine doing this pattern here on the floor in perspective at a different angle. Okay, so each of these having to move back towards a separate vanishing point here, and each of these having to move back towards a separate vanishing point there. That adds some serious complexity. And then you have this issue right here of creating uh, the reflection in the mirror at a different angle altogether. Um, quite quite a uh, impressive achievement. The edge of the table right here, even that. See how that hits right there? Very nice. So yes, perspective, essential thing to understand and come to grips with if you want to learn how to draw. Um, it can take some time, but once it clicks, it clicks for good. And it's so exciting when that happens because you start to just see it everywhere you look. Um, even when you're not drawing, you just look at a book that's sitting on a table and you see how that rectangle that is the cover of the book when the book is resting flat is distorted and you can trace the diagonals at the top and bottom of the book cover back towards a vanishing point. Uh, one point, two point, three point perspective, what you're going to see most commonly in painting. Very rarely will you see anything like a four point perspective, but some artists that have done that in the past you may be familiar with are people like M.C. Escher, who did some of those fisheye kind of four point perspective drawings where the lines you draw actually become curved 
um, in their distortion, which is tricky to achieve, but the effect is pretty neat. All right. Any questions here? Let's see. I uh, need to check the... I'm not sure what that means. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. All right. That is our art vocab for the day. I'm going to hide that art vocab. And it is now time for us to move on to our animal and activity game, where of course we are going to be drawing an animal. And, uh, oh, pardon me, as usual, I'm interrupted by the alarm for Appreciation Station. Appreciation Station. Today, we are appreciating our good friend, Ajia. Uh, Ajia, I wanna know if you remember this, this is a long time ago, but we were actually helping out Banksy in his studio, the artist Banksy. And we were working on some street art with him. He had given us a pile of sketches to uh, pin up on the wall and he was going to make some decisions about them later. Well, I grabbed one of the sketches and I accidentally dropped it and then spilled a whole bucket of paint all over the thing, covered it completely, and could no longer make out what the drawing was. Panicking, you know, this is my first assignment working with uh, that artist. Well, you had this brilliant idea. You said, Kyle, don't worry. I know you know how to draw. Why don't you do a sketch of the spilled paint bucket? And we'll pretend that was one of the ideas, you know, because that could be something deep and meaningful. It could be a symbol for something. Who knows, right? So I did that quick sketch. We pinned it up on the wall. Banksy came in, looked at the wall, and uh, he said, you know, I think that spilled paint bucket, that's the one I'm gonna work out to a final painting. And he did, and it sold at auction for about two and a half million dollars. Sadly, neither you or I saw a penny of that money. Uh, but thank you for saving the day. That was very clever of you. Uh, by the way, he didn't look anything like I thought he would, and it's a shame we can't talk about that. All right, back to drawing. So today, animal and activity game, as we always finish the show with the animal and activity game, it is important for you to turn on your uh, thinking stuff, okay, so that you can come up with something amazing. You can tell that my brain's fried for the day, so I'm not gonna come up with anything on my own. So I'm relying on you, dear viewers in the chat, to come up with something. In the past, we have done things such as a surfing monkey. How about a dragon? having a barbecue. We've done things like yesterday, an opera singing bat. It's always something new. It's always something fun. So while you are making some suggestions here in the chat, I'm going to get my light blue color ready to go. That looks nice. Ready to sketch, ready to draw your brilliant ideas. Here is what we have so far. A penguin skating. Oh, you know, I bet penguins can do that without the skates. Throw on the ice. A worm attending a first day of school, says Biola. Oh, that's kind of a cute idea, isn't it? That's a cute idea. Um, let's see, I just I just accidentally hit the chat. I didn't mean to do that. I'll refresh so I can see that again. Um, a walrus eating at an Italian restaurant. That's fun. A giraffe doing the hula hoop. A panda ski jumping. A... What is a Gaxel? Fashion model on a catwalk. Um, a walrus. We've never drawn a walrus on this show. I'm going to try that. Okay, Harry? I, I don't know what a walrus looks like. I have to sort of think. Is that kind of the shape of a walrus's head? Like... Is it kind of like, like that? It's sort of like that, right? If I was really gonna just cartoonify it. Do they have, do walruses have little ears? Or am I thinking of like hippos? Oh my gosh, this is hard. But I think that's pretty walrusy right there. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna tie a little um, napkin around him. That's cute, right? Walruses also have, if I remember right, 
Oh, I know what it is. They've got like sort of a little nose like that, like a seal kind of, right? It's getting more walrusy as I go. I think I'm getting there. I think I'm getting there. Something like that. And they've got like whiskers. Right? Is that walrusy enough for y'all? I hope so. And he's gonna have his utensils here and a big pile of spaghetti. And here he'll have his fork. He's holding that fork like this. And he's gonna have some noodles. Coming up like that. Off that pile. And you know, let's do a checkered tablecloth. We're really going with stereotypes here for like what a typical like Italian restaurant, you know, the red and white tablecloth and all that. How's that? Okay. It's kind of walrusy, right? It'll have to do, it'll have to do. Let me grab my darker blue color and let's see if we can make this work. Actually, now that I think of it, I think like the the divide there in the front is important, isn't it? Nice big tusks. Remember what I always tell you, the sketch is there to help you get to where you need to be, but not something that you have to follow, you know, perfectly, right? I think that's kind of walrus <laughs> what I'm doing, guys. This is just me guessing at animal anatomy and like just trying to make it work. Hopefully if I were to show this to somebody, they'd be like, yeah, I think that's a walrus, you know, whatever. This is kind of a tricky thing to do, you know, to to suggest that you have all these noodles kind of in a big pile, you know? So I'm, I'm thinking about that as I go, like can I vary the shapes enough? It helps too to have this this little pile of noodles coming up out of the uh, or this, this these noodles that are stretching up and up and uh, over away from the others. Really having to use some C curves, some S curves here, right? There we go. I 
That looks yummy. It makes me want to eat spaghetti. All right, let's come up and under here. Actually, I want to I want to do this. I want to There. Make sure that makes sense the way he's holding it, you know? There you go. All right, gang. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching the Draw Along Show. I'll see you next time. Have a great weekend if I don't see you sooner. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind. And I'm going to say ciao for now.